So today I'm going to give you a tour of the front garden as well as a look at my plants indoors. I figure I've been giving you an outdoor garden tour. Why not show you some of the potted plants I have indoors? And I'd be curious to hear what potted plants you have, what you like, because I'm just like, I'm just beginning to get to know the potted plant thing. Uh, so here we go. Because the sun is shining so bright right at this moment, we've had two days of rain and more coming. I wanted to show you how beautiful these clams are. Look at, I shouldn't chew on my pen. Look at these beautiful, beautiful petals. Like I said, flower fireworks, gorgeous. And I really, really love how these little things that are about to pop out, how they just kind of look like ballerinas doing plies or something. Like, <laughs> they're just so, so pretty. And these are more pink and then those are more purple. Hope you can see I'm gonna get close to close to them too I have a place where I feel safe putting my foot but now it looks like it's filling out so maybe I'll just reach as close as I can so I took notes on things I want to say so I have a notepad under my arm I'm gonna set that down for a second so I can reach closer and get you in to see these gorgeous gorgeous I mean just how stunning are these guys they're just so pretty. And they're pretty tall, too, I will say. So I was visiting my parents last weekend. It was my father's birthday. And I stopped at the local Walmart. And boy, inside it was so horrible. So many plants were dead. But I found these cellulosia. Oh, the light isn't shining on them. But they're just gorgeous. They're a type of... Uh, they're, I think they're related to the coxcomb. And I just love sort of that velvety... I love that velvety look to a plant. That's just like, makes me so excited. So I have yet to figure out where I'm gonna put them, probably in the flower bed somewhere. But yeah. <laughs> All right, on to the, the tomatoes. If you recall last week, this beautiful yellow pear tomato plant was only this tall. I swear to God, it was only that tall. It has grown probably a half a foot just in one week, and that's because we had rain midweek, and then we had rain yesterday and some rain today, and it's just they've taken off. I've also transplanted up the blackberry plants I got. I They're not in big enough containers for them. In fact, that one pretty much only sized up maybe like four inches on either side. Um, that was the biggest container. But you know, I'm not gonna put them in their permanent location this year. I really don't know where they belong. Probably along the house on the front, but I just need to make a decision on it. So for now, they're going to be in these things, and I just hope they last the summer and the winter, and I might have to move them to another location so that they don't interfere with the tomatoes too much. But yeah, that's the blackberries. Look at these tomato plants. They're massive. And the, the, the baby tomatoes are growing quite a bit. Last time I showed you, excuse the finger there, I showed you the tomatoes and come on, focus. You can do it. There you go. You can already see these are the zebra. I upgraded my label so you could read them better. And you can already sort of see the stripes they're going to happen. They're going to have like a lighter green and a darker green stripe to them. They also sort of have a pointy bottom, which I noticed is different than the um, Cherokee tomato plant, which I'm gonna find. Where is my little one? He's down near the bottom. Okay, here's the Cherokee tomato. And you can see it has sort of more of a flat bottom and it's definitely got more of this sort of indented top, which is sort of the signature of the Cherokee tomato. And already it's just like so much bigger than the zebra tomatoes. I'd say they're probably, just this one is probably like twice the size. My Gardener's Delight tomatoes are doing just great. They're looking beautiful. I hope they start turning colors soon so I can pluck them, but I see there's a set up here growing as well as down here, so hopefully they'll have lots. Now I do want to tell you about a concern I've had, which is the leaves are curling and they're kind of small at the top, and I am worried that I have curly leaf um, disease on this plant. I don't know if it's pesticide drift, it could also be because there's been strong winds. Typically, I've heard 
when extremely strong winds, which we've had around these storms, happen, that you end up with leaf curl. I can tell you, I've been watering these plants plenty, not too much. I've been waiting until the soil is dry, but not so dry that they droop. So, but you can see, they're still curled, even though it's been raining for three days. So, I'm really not sure what to think. But, I will add this. They are continuing to flower. They've had this curly leaf issue for quite a while, probably a few weeks. And they're continuing to produce flowers, so I hope that's a good sign. Oh, oh, a mini bee. Can you see him? Where'd he go? Where'd my bee go? I just saw one. I've had mostly tiny bees visiting the garden. There he is. Oh my gosh. Can you see him? Where'd you go, buddy? All right. Uh, I've had mostly tiny bees visiting, but today I saw a couple of wasps or hornets and I can't believe it. I was excited to see wasps or hornets. Crazy, right? So I'm going to make a prediction about this mystery tomato, and I think I'm probably going to be wrong, but based on the description I just gave you of the other tomatoes, remember the difference between the zebra and the Cherokee? This, oh, get out of the way, Leaf. This looks like it has a flat bottom, right? And it kind of looks like that squarish bottom that you might see on like heirloom Cherokee type tomato. And it's got those indents on the side. So I'm making the bet that this plant is Cherokee. We'll find out. It's either that or zebra. So, you know, it's a 50-50 chance. But I, I'm pretty sure this is Cherokee. Also the fact that it's one and not a bunch. And I noticed with the zebras, they usually bloom in like two or threes. There's another over there. So... We will find out, won't we? I guess I say that a lot. The uh, squash are doing great. I harvested the one uh, um, scallop squash last week. And then I have another one, beautiful one down here. Now, it's got some green on it still. Tell me, if it's got some green on it still, does it just need more sun? Is it okay to eat now? Should I harvest it? I mean, look, this sucker's getting big. And I don't want it to get so big that it won't... You know, the skin's still soft. You can see the indent there just from my fingernail, which I have almost none, but um, the skin's still soft. So I'm not sure what to do. Tell me what you think. And I've propped it up with a bottle so it's not sitting on the ground because I, I knew planting two zucchini, two squash in the same container would be a problem. But they're kind of solving it by one of them leaning over and then I've trellised the other one up so it gets sun. I was very excited that my crookneck squash is finally starting to bloom, and it looks like in a day or two, this yellow crookneck, we might have the blossom for the actual fruit blooming. We have the male here, but we might have the actual fruit. I have a couple of zucchini growing of decent size. This one is doing pretty good. I keep fighting, um, <laughs> fighting the slugs off of it, but it seems to be doing all right. And... I have two more growing in here. This one's getting decent size, probably can harvest in three or four days. And that one I hand pollinated with another squash blossom. I've been fighting off the cucumber beetles, and I think I'm winning, if you've seen the last videos I've done. And I, if you just look back at the last videos, you'll see a color change in the leaves here. This plant had a lot of yellow leaves. It really wasn't looking healthy. And I think fighting off the cucumber beetles has really helped. It's got beautiful green leaves now. They're getting big. The leaves were very small before. And in addition to that, check it out, guys. Now, these are the early fortune cucumbers, right? Yes. Wait. Wait. I gotta read <laughs> the label. Oh, these are Boston Pickling. Okay, good. That's what I meant to say. Right. Really. <laughs> you know I got my words mixed up. These are never gonna get very big. I think probably like twice this length because they're pickling cucumbers and therefore they're going to get to the size of like you would buy pickles at the store. But I did hand pollinate two and I think <laughs> we'll just say these are the two I hand pollinated and they're growing. They're not diminishing in size. They're uh they're growing which is very exciting and I've been trying to hand pollinate where I can and <laughs> I know it's nerdy but I'm actually really excited that this guy is doing its own tendril around the, uh, the arm here. The, others, the other cucumber is doing alright. It's not doing fantastic yet. 
it's been having problems and it's still got some yellowing. The leaves are starting to grow out. It is putting out consistent blossoms and I have seen a lot of bees and flies and other pollinators out here. So I'm just hoping um, that we'll see a lot from it. I haven't seen a lot of growth from my eggplant and it is getting some sand fly damage. You can see the little holes there. I don't know if maybe it's just not getting enough sun. Maybe I need to give it fertilizer. I think that's what I'll try to do this week. But it's it's a small eggplant. It's the uh, fairy tale eggplant, and they produce very small fruit. So maybe it just maybe it just doesn't get big. I don't know. Tell me what you think if you know anything about them. Tomatoes getting large. There's a lot growing on them. But my happiest thing about over in this area of the garden is oh guys. My first pepper, and it's a shishito pepper because this plant has been a little further along than the others, but it is, I mean, it's getting to be a decent size. I think probably in a week, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think in a week I can harvest it. Oops, did I just put a hole in it? Well, either way, I'm so excited. And I'm getting good flowering on the others, including my Jimmy Nardellos, starting to show some um, baby peppers there. And... The lima beans are starting to not only trellis up, but now they're starting to flower out. And look, I had put another pole up to hold the fence up, and it decided to skip poles and then come back over. So that's kind of cool. I knew this would happen, but I am sad to say that cabbage worms are absolutely decimating my in-ground cabbage. The leaves are beautiful, and I think at a minimum I will harvest the leaves to eat just as cabbage leaves. Um, and I probably will not have a full head because look, <laughs> I mean this, oh, so much damage. Well, there's a little bit of something forming, but I can almost guarantee it's going to be worm riddled. However, even though it's small, the cabbage in this pot seems to so far have been spared most of the cabbage worm damage. So maybe I'll get a cabbage head after this, out of this after all. Let's see, what else is there to show you? Oh Yes. I want to show you, this is my acorn squash. This is, this is the guy that's growing from there all the way over here. And now instead of climbing, it's kind of going along. This morning I had the extreme pleasure, oh, I need to pull back the, of hand pollinating this beautiful acorn squash. You can kind of see it's an acorn shape already. It's an actual acorn squash and even better, I was able to use, now this is just the leftover petals, but I was able to actually use the petals from an actual acorn squash plant, which usually I have to use them from another plant um, to pollinate. So I was super excited about that. And there's another one, where are you? There's another one, another set growing down here. Hopefully there will be a female, a male, female among there somewhere. So it's all good signs. Uh, I've shown you these guys, but gosh, aren't they just pretty? I just love, love how they look. They're just so gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Way over there, you can see that that's the first, um, flower of the, my God, marigolds. That's what they're called. <laughs> of the marigolds that I grew from seed. These were all purchased, but, um, uh, it has a beautiful orange red to it and uh, I'm hoping it'll really there's another one there's another one here that's starting to bloom so hopefully soon we will have some gorgeous offset of colors to go with these beautiful oranges so these are the king coral coxcomb and you can see they're starting to grow I think they're supposed to be pink in the end but they are so pretty they're tiny at this stage but they look like they already look like little mini brain worms now and they're just going to be gorgeous. They're filling out really nicely. The flowers are starting to develop. So I think it's going to be really exciting when we actually see some coxcomb. Because as I've said, that's my absolute favorite flower. As I was giving the garden tour, I realized that my glow of amaranth are starting to bloom. Look how tiny this guy is. He's so tiny. But he's going to be gorgeous. He's supposed to be like a globe shape. And I think there's another one there. So um, we have some globe amaranth growing and hopefully they will just be pretty, pretty, pretty. The last thing I wanna show you is, if you read the sign, 
I remember those seeds I got this week in the mail. I'll, I'll have a link at the end of this video to the seed collection I got for the fall. Um, I planted dragon tongue bush bean um, seeds there la uh, yesterday. So they should be bloomed. We should see some sprouts by the next time I do this video. Either that or the day after. Um, dragon tongue bush beans are this beautiful green and purple beans and they're supposed to be um, pretty prolific and super delicious. And I didn't do all nine because we have the Thai basil here in the corner. So I did five thinking that that would be a reasonable amount of space because I've also heard they need a lot of space to get sun for that to get that beautiful mottled color. And I want to give them the ability to grow to the two or three foot height they get so they can compete for sun with the tomatoes because they probably they like a little bit of shade but they'll probably appreciate having a lot of sun. Hey Lou, you a good girl? Can't have a video without having my dogs premiered. Hi River. Alright, before I go, before I do my closing remarks, I'm going to show you my indoor plants because I very rarely highlight them. I transplanted this guy up. He's got these beautiful hanging little tendrils. I transplanted him from a container about this big like a week ago. And look, he's just, or she, or whatever, is just taking over. Um, this is, this palm looking thing is a plant I rescued from the office right before they shut everything down due to the coronavirus. Uh, I brought it home. It was doing okay in the office, but it didn't get a lot of sunlight. And it was, both sides were drooping together. They were drooping really far. And I repotted it because it was, it was flooded a little bit. And look at this. Because it's been repotted, it is growing a baby. My office plant is germinating a new baby out of the stock. And I can't wait to take it back to the office for everyone to see how good care I've taken care of it. Um, another plant that's from the office that's doing okay, not phenomenally. It was in the it was in my office for a while. I spilled some dirt. I have to vacuum that up now. But um, is this beautiful trailing vine? And look, it's starting to get some leaves up here, which I was hoping because it was just looking so barren up here. So I gave it some fish fertilizer, um, and it seems to be doing great. This is my Thanksgiving or Christmas cactus, depending on what you want to call it. And this is a... Where's the new leaves? I think that's a new one. It's had some new growth on it a little bit. Slow, but surely. This was a little extra I stuck in the ground, and it seems to be doing well. And this is my money tree. I forgot what that thing's called, but I know the sap from it is super poisonous, so I'm careful. And you like... You like my chopsticks holding up the uh <laughs> holding up the money tree so that's them i definitely am noticing now that i'm showing you that i need to clean that area out when i had my dirt um spill it apparently also got there and this is a little i keep this here to make me happy this is a little drawing my friend kate sent me in a mail we're doing written correspondence with each other and uh, i have it next to the tv and it's just such a pretty little thing to, to look at and whenever I'm a little bit sad I look at it and it makes me happy. And then in our dining room I have this is a pothos plant I got two um, little seedlings I can see there's flies because I just potted this up but the pothos plant my friend Emily gave me is doing great. Uh, I started my calendula oil yesterday that's these guys were drying you remember the calendula flowers outside. Um, this is what I've harvested for three weeks and now it's getting sun, heat, and uh, you can see I started it yesterday. It's in olive oil, and it'll eventually end up, the um, oil will eventually end up in solves for skin treatment and for lotions and things like that for myself. And then here's some more. I bought this. I just love. I bought this last weekend, this little three-piece pot. It has a hole in the bottom for them to, I don't have anything for the middle. Do you have a recommendation for a a good plant to put in the middle in between these guys. I totally forgot what that guy's called or that guy. I think that's a type of Asian fern. But they were in the kitchen window and they just didn't have enough space to grow. They had these tiny little pots and they were looking unhappy. So I've potted them up. And this is not the full setup, but this is sort of an area where I have my staging area for my dried herbs and flowers. Here's my mixed basil. I heard one of the YouTubers just say she just throws the basil in and then all kinds of basil, whatever she gathers, gathers, and then, you know, she has it all winter. I <laughs> haven't done anything with the uh, thyme yet, but that's there. And then 
you know, I've been harvesting so many calendula flowers and still so little. To be fair, I do have calendula tea every night, so that could be dipping into my stash. Uh, my lemon balm stash is starting to grow, and I'm really looking forward to putting that into tea and other things, although I use it right now fresh, but in the winter, it'll be really great to have. So there you go. That concludes today's weekly tour of the garden, indoor and outdoor this time. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button. Tell me what you think. If you have any suggestions or observations, especially what's going off my tomatoes and recommendations on a good plant to put indoors in between those other two, I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, and if you aren't a subscriber already, please do subscribe and make sure to hit that bell button so that you get alerts when my videos come up. See you next time.